comic fam, everything's changed. Another week, another list, a new studio. Hit the like and subscribe button. We're talking about the hottest comic books in the world with Gem from Gem Mink Collectibles. How you feeling, brother? Everything's changing over here as well, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. Number 10 on the list, we have Amazing Spider-Man 57 from 1968, the first meeting of Spider-Man and Kazar. Kazar, Kazar, Namor, Namor, does it really matter anymore? We have multiple copies selling and have been on the uptick since Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. We caught what looks like a glimpse of the Savage Land in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness during that multiversal free fall scene. Are we gonna get the Savage Land in the X-Men? Well, we have a T-Rex and recently the discovery of the underwater civilization of the Talakan and Black Panther Wakanda forever. This could be another opportunity for us to be introduced to a additional lost city from comic lore. That's a good point. There are a total of 1,101 slabs on the CGC census, 2.5s, 127 9.0s, and 116 9.2s. There are 98 copies at a 9.4. The record high was set in January of this year for 645. Last sale on GPA in June clocked in at $456. There are 55 copies graded at a 9.6. The last GPA sale was a record high set for $1,080 in January of this year. Then we have 22 CGC 9.8s. The last GPA sale was December of last year, 2021, where it sold for $2,222. The comic fam is specking on Kazar. We have a 6.5 that broke records this week. Last selling in 2021 for $119, up 11% selling for $132. The 8.0 is sticking to the same path, selling for $142, which is just about its 12-month average. And the CGC 9.2 sold for $375, 13% above its 12-month. If you enjoy what we do you can support the show and better your comic hunt collecting overall knowledge about funny books get suggested pricing and so much more use code tom 101 on key collector comics it's available for both androids and iphones get access to the information we cover in our videos before we hit the mic Speaking of X-Men and the Savage Land, moving on to number nine, we have some more mutant madness. We have Nick's issue three from 2004, the first appearance of Laura Kinney, X-23. X-23 made her debut in X-Men Evolution, the animated series in 2003, and we are seeing multiple grade points trend upward, not just this past week, but really this past month since the rumors started circulating, fan casting has been done. We have seen an addition in the last three weeks of 29 slabs added to the census. Yeah, that's right. We just talked about this book three weeks ago on the Hot 10, and we have four strong performers to report on, a 6.5 that sold for 346, 16% above its 12-month average, a 7.0 which stayed about the same, selling for 370, and a 7.5 that sold for 425, which is 23% above its 12-month average. The 8.0 is trending up 7% this past week, selling for $450. When this made number eight on our list three weeks ago, the 9.8s were hitting nearly 1,300. Now recent sales shows it at 1,400 strong. I think X-23 is a safe bet. Not only do we have Deadpool 3 coming with Hugh Jackman reprising his role as Wolverine, you know we're gonna get Wolverine and X-Men content, so X-23 is bound to show up. Could it be X-23? Dakin, are they going to recast Logan all together? A lot weighs on Deadpool 3. I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below while we take you to number eight on the list. A second print of Batman 608. We're talking hush. Iconic imagery by Jim Lee. This is something that they make statues out of. And could we get the hush in live action with this new Batman reboot? It's quite possibly so. I mean, the Matt Reeves Batman film use that as a major plot device the killing of a reporter named elliot a tribute to the character in the comic books and this is known as one of the best batman stories of all time easily one of the top 10. we have a scarce comic book as well 8.0 record-breaking sales selling for 134 in june up 11 percent, hitting 149 the 9.6 trending at 320 dollars 17 percent over its recent 12 months and then we have a 9.8 selling for 635 two percent over its recent 12 months the 9.8s hit heights of 810 dollars october of this year post film it's down but not by much we have a lot of data on this book. We could look at the first print and the second print here. The first print has 2,199 copies on the CGC census, whereas the second print has about half, 1,278. 
even when you look at the CGC 9.8, there are 1,281 in that first print and only 498 when it comes to the second. There are 555 copies of the first print on the census and 361 of the second print. And when you consider that we are talking about the comparisons between a first and second print, that tells you that the production of the books alone means that there is a scarcity leaning towards one copy or the other. The census count just proves it. At the list at number seven, we have Amazing Spider-Man 129, a major Bronze Age key, the first appearance of Frank Castle, the Punisher. I'm loving what Jason Aaron is doing with this Punisher run right now, and we don't have any real news or anything going on with the character. It could be somebody speculating that we'll eventually get Frank Castle in the MCU, or it could be someone who just picked up a blue chip Marvel key. We have a 1.0 record-breaking sale for an incomplete copy, so this is as cheap as it gets for a Marvel blue chip book. Last selling for 420 in 2014, up 660 dollars, all because of a coupon being cut out. And with a census count of almost 14,000, it's nice to have this little variant to distinguish it from that larger run. We have a 3.0 Mark Jewelers that sold for $420 in 2020. It's up 138% selling for $1,000, which is also about what the regular edition goes for. Oh snap. So someone basically got a Mark Jeweler ad insert for free because that's like what the price typically is for a 3.0. We also have a 5.5 that came to market last selling in 2019 for $725 up $203 selling for $2,200. Now a standard edition in that same grade goes for about $1,400 to $1,500. This is a monster sale. We're talking about a mid-grade comic. The highest grade of a Mark Jeweler ASM 129 is a 9.2 that sold in 2019 for roughly $2,300. The highest recent graded sale was a 9.0 that sold in 2021 for $4,100. The Mark J is one of the most sought out after collectibles in the last five years. Speaking of sought after collectibles, with you moving into that new space, any new collectibles you're gonna add to the walls? Yo, I got new comics coming. I got more toys. I'm looking at some statues. I'm actually anticipating new videos from you to figure out what to put up because your studio is closer to being finished and I've been following you on Instagram. It looks outstanding. Thank you, man. Yeah, it's been a long time coming, but we're almost there. I cannot wait to start recording out there and get everything displayed. Number six on the list is Ghost Rider number one, debuting in 1973. We have the first solo title featuring Johnny Blaze, Ghost Rider, and we also have the first cameo appearance of Damien Hellstrom, who I mentioned because he's going to be accompanying Hellcat very soon in her own solo series. I digress. We have comic books that are trending up. A comic book, Bronze Age, horror meets the macabre that has been wanted throughout the last two years. Ghost Rider has been riding high off of that monster 9.8 sale in January of this year for $26,400. Could it still be trickle down effect? It could still be the fact that we got to get Johnny Blaze. We have to get Ghost Rider in the MCU. Now we do have that black picture frame, tough to get in high grade border. And we have a 7.5 that sold for $750 staying right around its 12 month average. The 9.0 hitting 1500 that's 13% over its recent 12 months. And the 9.2, 9% over its recent 12 months with a sale at $1,800. If there's one thing I know and I've learned from 2022 is that the comic fans dig the drama for sure, but they really enjoy their horror. Werewolf by Night was a major success. And if that tells us anything is that you gotta get your legions of monster keys now. The Midnight Suns video game just came out. I haven't had a chance to pick it up yet. And you got to think about those low census count numbers when we talk about modern books or variants, because on this Ghost Rider one, there are 3,769 total slabs on the CGC census. The Supernatural is feeling safer and safer. We chatted about this book back on Halloween when it ranked number five on the Hot 10. Since then, there has been an uptick of 106 slabs added to the census as well as an additional 9.8. Big recommendation to the Jed McKay Ghost Rider run this year, an essential read, one of the top comics being produced by Marvel right now. Totally agree. I've been digging that run myself. Just covered this week's video in my latest new comic book day reviews. Moving on to number five, another book that has been familiar on these lists in the past few weeks. We have Hulk issue number one from 2008, The Red Hulk, y'all. 
We were talking about Hush moments ago, created by Jeff Loeb. Another creation of his was the Red Hulk. General Thunderbolt Ross taking on that red skin, possibly going to be portrayed in full by Harrison Ford. Will he go full Red Hulk? Well, we know he's going to be portraying the general, and this book has been hot ever since the announcement. And we have 3,325 slabs on the census. If you're keeping track, that's 105 more since it was on the hot 10 six weeks ago. Now, this book has been hot ever since, but keep in mind, since the Thunderbolt spec started, the record high this book reached was $750 in November 2021. 9.8s are selling for around $320, so this may be an optimal time to buy. I can't imagine it going much lower than that. We have an 8.0 selling for $70, 23% over its recent 12 months, the 9.4 going for $128 up 21%, the 9.6 selling for 166, 11% over its recent 12 months, and then that 9.8, as mentioned, selling for around the $370 marker, 14% over its recent 12 months. Yeah, I agree with you. Sticking around that $350 mark when it's hit upwards of 750, I don't see any reason why it can't make it back to its former glory. Bringing us to number four on the list, a character that is in the rumor mill of also joining the MCU. We've got the Sentry, issue number one from the year 2K. We also have the first appearance of The Void, his alt persona, his evil persona, which is why he is being speculated upon. Rumor is that the studios are looking for a anti-Superman type to be portrayed on the screen, possibly to go up against the Thunderbolts. Could it be Sentry? And I think, if anything, this shows... The community's wish to see this character more than anything on the screen. Huge fandom for this character. But there's also a lot of spec on Squadron Supreme, Hyperion, which is a great possibility too considering the Thunderbolts is a team of characters. There's going to have to be more than one character or possibly just one super bad. 1,189 total slabs on the census. That's one more than when Tom reported on this just under two weeks ago on the trending list. There is a San Diego Comic-Con variant, and we had a CGC 9.8 hit $350, 27% above its $275 average. We have a 5.5 breaking record selling for $50 this week, 39% over the last time it sold back in 2020 for $36. That just shows that people are buying anything they can get. The 8.5 is going for $85, 15% over its recent 12 months. The 9.6 hitting 215, 19% over its recent 12 months. And the 9.8 hitting 400, that's 7% over the last year. And I am just like the rest of the comic readers and fans. I want to see Sentry rip Carnage in half. Damn it. I want to see him get ripped in half by Null. King in black, baby. Moving on to number three on the list, we have Avengers 144 from 1976. This is where Patsy Walker becomes Hellcat. Now, Patsy Walker already played a huge role in the Jessica Jones Netflix series. Will we be getting those characters back? She also does have ties to Damien Hellstrom. One of the best parts to come out of the Iron Man series and getting their own series soon and we'll be featuring Damien Hellstrom. I digress. We have an 8.0 selling for $105, 11% over its recent 12 months, an 8.5 hitting 120, 3% over its recent 12 months, the 9.0 selling for 175, 28% over its recent 12 months. You see in the trend here, we have an increase of copies sold of 271% week over week. And it didn't stop there as we get some high grades on the list. A 9.2 selling for $250, 36% above its average. The 9.4 selling for $350, 20% above its average. And then the 9.6, which went for $500, putting it 12% above its 12-month average. This is one of those books that at a 9.8 only comes up maybe once a year. So that means when it does, it may break records just because members are willing to pay that extra amount to secure a copy they may not be able to get for quite some time. There are 23 on the census. The last time one sold was for $1,440 July of this year. The record was set in 2018 before the comic boom for 1900 I know we got David Mack and Peach Momoko exclusives for the December mystery mail call, but I hear you're adding a third book. That's right. We got three exclusives this month. Demon Wars, Shield of Justice, Peach Momoko mystery mail call exclusive, David Mack on Ninja Funk number one, Trade Dress, Foils, Virgins, and Metals going out at random, one per box. And the third, Mr. Easta, variant cover done by Nate Made It, a Johnny the Homicidal Maniac 
homage. ComicTom101.com to support the show and join the community. Number two on the list is Omega Men number three. We got more Lobo Salon. The main man himself can't stay off this list. Ever since we heard the James Gunn news, ever since we got the Jason Momoa rumor mill, we've been seeing this book show up and it's not a scarce book. There are 7,600 total slabs on the census, which is why it's so easy to find. Seven more since we chatted about this a week ago have been added to that census. And the 9.8 is approaching its all-time high of 456. And we haven't seen that happen since November 2021. We have a 7.5 up 9% selling for 70 this week. The 9.2 selling for 110, 26% over its recent 12 months. And the 9.4 hitting 144, 48% over its recent 12 months. And it didn't stop there. The 9.6 sold for $250, 81% above its average. And then the 9.8 selling for now $395, 24% more than it was selling on average. Creeping up every single week in multiple grade points. That's what lands comics on our list. We have a lot of spec on Lobo, but a lot of individuals who may not be as familiar with who's drawn Lobo, who's even written Lobo. So I'll give you a tip. Read and collect anything that Simon Bisley was attached to. Which brings us to number one on our list, the hottest comic book in the multiverse. It's following trends just like number 10 did, but not first meetups. We're talking TV nostalgia with Star Trek issue one from 1967. Out of this multiverse, more like out of this galaxy. We have the science fiction premiere issue debuting in 1967. And a lot of members probably wondering, why is this comic hot as hell? Why is it leading the hot 10? This book has made our hot 10 list multiple times in the last few months. And it's all because of the sole 9.8 copy and five 9.6s that exist. Very low census count. Back in 2015, the 9.8 set the record at $40,500. And then we have 9.6s, only five of them, one of which coming to the market in November of this year selling for more than that 9.8, selling for $45,600. The trickle down effect was inevitable. We have some record breakers. The CGC 8.0 stayed about the same. We had a new sale of $1,680, right around what it goes for. But we have a 7.0 that sold for $665 in 2021, up 99%, now selling for $1,325. And then we have another record breaker, 7.5, selling for $879 in 2021, up 62%, selling for $1,425 this week. Star Trek lost its director, Matt Shackman, back in September for the Fantastic Four, so no new News for Star Trek, yet it still makes it on this list. We want to know your thoughts in the comment section below, and as always, geek responsibly and stay minty fresh. Enough said. Comic fam, I've teamed up with Jem, and we have a brand new line of variants coming out, and the first one is dropping before end of year. You know we had to do the poo treatment to my favorite rap poop of all time, Bone Thugs. Poo and Anna come up. Join us on Whatnot. Links in the description, and we'll see you soon. We have two other videos for you to check out as well. Enjoy them. We made them for you.